What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and another video. Uh, I was out in the garage fixing up my ARB air locker in the rear. Um, decided I wanted to do a video on a mod that I've done, uh, something I've changed out actually over the last year um, that I think you guys would enjoy. So I'm going to get into that here in a second, but I want to show you what happened with the ARB air locker last weekend when I was at the Badlands. So last weekend I was at the Badlands off-road park. Um, the first time I've been out in probably probably three or four months. Um, had some nice weather, figured I'd get out there and, and do some obstacles and, and just come home, quick, easy day. Um, so went out to the Badlands Off-Road Park, uh, got about two feet into the first obstacle. It was just a little rock garden. And I heard my compressor cycling, 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 cycling. <laughs> And I was like, oh no, the rear locker's going. So I got through the rest of the day without the rear locker because I could hear it hissing inside the diff. So it was not the line, it was something inside the differential. When I took it apart, um, I'll actually put a little pick up here for you so you can kind of see what the arrangement is on the axle. Um, instead of mine, the, the line coming in on the right side, mine actually comes in on the left. Um, so it makes it a little bit easier for the line to get to uh, to get out of the differential um, with, with the seal housing being where it is. It doesn't have to go all the way across it just goes right up and out um, but I took it apart and first thing I see is the copper line completely destroyed and as you can see I mean it ripped it right apart I'm um, not sure how that happened because the differential has been set up that way for the last two years I have not touched the line whatsoever so there must have been some vibrations back there that caused the good that. news is there was still enough slack um, in the line for me to just cut it where it was and just basically reconnect it so I bought a seal housing just for something to have because I thought that's what it was. Turns out it was not that, it was the line. So um, I was able to do it for, for no cost, but I also decided to upgrade the diff cover while I was back here. So I um, went ahead and upgraded the diff cover there. Uh, but as you can see, yeah, the line goes in on the left side instead of the right. Um, but yeah, everything's all fixed up now and, and she's good to go. I tested her out, so we're back to being locked and loaded there. And what I wanted to get into the, this video with is talking about the Poison Spider fenders. Now, I switched these fenders out. I had the KBD um, polyurethane fenders on this Jeep. I had them on my last Jeep as well. Um, still really like those fenders, but decided I want to change it up a little bit, add some strength and, and a better cosmetic look than the KBD fender. So let me get into the pros and cons of why I upgraded this and why it was even necessary for me to upgrade it. All right, guys, so why did I choose the Poison Spider fenders over the fenders that I already had? So why did I go with these? Well, first of all, these are much more structurally strong than the other fenders I was running and also a lot of the other fenders on the market as well. Um, let me go ahead and show you why these fenders are so far superior. All right guys, so what's so nice about these fenders versus some others on the market is these structural supports here as well as also up here too. So what that does is it connects it to, I believe it's the subframe um, in there. So it basically adds another layer of protection to these fenders. Now, normally what would happen is, you know, let's just say you have a cheap off-brand steel fender flare. You hit it right here, it's going to move this sheet metal in and it's going to mess up all this geometry right here. Whereas with the Poison Spider fenders, it's going to push that load into the subframe and it's going to stay exactly where it's at. Um, so I've seen multiple pictures of these being bashed into trees and they come right out just fine. Still completely structurally in shape, no damage to the, the body or the subframe. Um, only thing, of course, you'll have is some, uh, some messing up of the paint. Uh, but that's a huge advantage when you're going off-roading a lot and in tight spaces like up here in Indiana where everything's tight trails and you're going around a lot of trees. That's a huge advantage. Now with the KBD flares, being that they were polyurethane, um, they just mounted to the outside of the sheet metal. Um, so of course, if you hit that on something, it's just gonna bend those fenders, but if you hit it hard enough, it's going to actually push in your, your body panel as well. So something to definitely consider when you're upgrading your fenders is giving something that's gonna be structurally strong. Now, Poison Spider is not the only one that's doing this, but they were one of the first ones to do this. So um, why else would I have upgraded this besides so another that? reason for me is how how well these fenders match up to the body lines. So with the KVD fenders and a lot of other fenders on the market, again, <laughs> they're gonna be more of a flat fender style. So let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. It's better to see this visually. 
All right, guys, so it's probably going to be hard to see this, but if you look, they do go up just a little bit right there to match with the body, whereas most fenders are just completely flat right here. Um, so they're not going to have that really nice bend right there to match the body lines. It's so much more obvious when you see this in person and really look at it, but it, it follows these lines, I mean, absolutely perfectly, whereas with my other fenders, there was a gap there, and it was flat. It was very flat right there, and same thing with the rear as well. So if you take a look at these, they match up perfectly with the body lines all the way down to the bottom here. I mean, absolutely perfectly. And as you can see in the rear as well, they have the support up here. So this, I, I do need to finish this. When I first installed this, it was really cold. So I didn't end up finishing that part, but I do need to finish that. But as you can see, also support back here, support right here. I mean, these just are a far superior fender that's on the market out there. So for one, very much structurally sound um, with these fenders. And two, they match up perfectly with the body lines, which is a big thing for me. I have a little bit of OCD and that was bothering me a little bit. Um, but another reason why I upgraded these, and this is also more cosmetic, um, the KBD fenders, being that they're polyurethane, they were starting to fade. Um, some of those fenders on for about a year, maybe a year and a half on this JK, and it, it sits in the garage most of the time. So they were starting to fade pretty significantly. Um, I don't have a picture of it to show you guys, but I mean, it was it was pretty obvious. Like they needed to be touched up or painted. Um, and being that they're polyurethane, they're pretty hard to paint unless you really know what you're doing. So um, for me, being that they were fading so quickly and they were only gonna get worse, it was something that needed to be. You know, another thing for me with the, with the KBD fenders is they were starting to sag a little bit, uh, mainly in the rear though. Um, so in the middle section of the rear, like right, right about here, they were starting to bend down. Um, so they were no longer up straight like these are that look really, really nice. They were starting to bend down a little bit. Um, and I know it's something very small, but it was bothering me quite a bit that they were starting that quickly to, to bend down. But again, there are polyurethane fenders. So that, that is a common thing that you have to deal with on a polyurethane product. And another big advantage to these fenders, and this is just really about upgrading your fenders in general. So this is not compared to the KBD or, or anything like that. Just compared to the stock fenders, there is so much room for articulation with these fenders specifically. Um, and I love that. It really opens up the fender well, as you can see here. So much room here, um, especially in the back as well. I mean, so much room for articulation. It's a super nice upgrade. This is probably the first thing I would do if I could do it all over again. Probably the first thing I would upgrade because, first of all, it's one of the more pricey items if you go with the Poison Spider, but right off the bat, that would allow you to run bigger tires without having a lift. So that's a big thing right there is how much it'll open up the fender well here um, for you to articulate. Now, there are a few cons that I do have to mention here with the Poison Spider. Number one, the price. And this is a common thing when I'm doing reviews here. Um, but when you're going with a higher level product, like looking at the best products on the market, which is what this would be, um, the, the price is going to be higher. I mean, for the for the fronts, I believe I paid right around 500 bucks um, for the set. And then for the rear, um, I did get those painted with the spider spider armor coat that they use at Poison Spider. So that was more around seven, eight hundred dollars. So altogether, you're looking right around 1300 bucks for this set of fenders. And if you're looking to put the best products on your Jeep and the best looking with the most engineering behind them, because this is not easy to do. Like with these bins, this is not easy to do. This took time, uh, this took took patience, you know, to get this all fitted the way that it was. Um, so props to Poison Spider there, but if, if you're looking to put the nicest products on your Jeep, you're going to have to go pay a premium. Um, that's just the way it is in this industry. You're going to pay a little bit more. To me, this was well worth it. Um, I wish I would have done this right from the get-go, but the KBD fenders were fairly cheap. Um, so I think if you're looking and you're not really sure what brand you want to go with, I would go with the KBD to start with. Um, just just get that on your Jeep. It's only like 300 bucks for that whole set. Um, and they'll last you a long, long time if you take care of them. So nothing wrong with the KBD, but the Poison Spider is in a whole nother category to me, in my opinion, just based off the engineering, the looks, and the strength. And another 
small con, this isn't really a big one, but something that could happen if you're really wheeling hard um, is you could still technically mess up the, the sheet metal as well as the subframe on here if you hit this hard enough on a tree. Um, so it's not something that's absolutely bulletproof. It's not, um, you could definitely still have some damage with these fenders if you hit them hard enough. So that, that is a con there. But again, this is probably gonna be the best fender you can get on the market next to, you know, the Genrite, Evo, um, those, those types of brands. So um, there is that small con there, but that's gonna be a con with almost any of them on the market. If you really damage these enough, they are going to mess up other parts of the Jeep as well. All right, guys, and the last con here is gonna have to be the install. Um, these did take quite a long time to install um, because, like I said, they have a lot more strength, a lot more drilling you have to do than a normal fender flare. Um, it had to be at least seven or eight holes per side that I had to drill. And then you also have to put a nut cert in. And a nut cert is something that does scare a lot of people. Let me tell you, it was the first time I've messed with a nut cert and it really was not that bad. But there are a few tips that I have if you are going to be installing these fenders. The first tip, is to buy one of these nutsert tools. Not only is this going to save you a lot of time, it's gonna save you a lot of anger as well, let me tell you. And those are not fun to mess with, but a lot more fun than the little tool that they send with the product here. Um, they give you this little nut um, with a spacer, and it does work, but it's gonna take you at least another hour um, per, per set to install, just based off how hard those are to operate. It has to be perfectly straight, whereas with this nutsert tool, um, it's a lot easier to operate and you're gonna have a lot less problems when it comes to installing those nuts. And another tip as well is take your time. Take your time. Um, if you have to only install the front set one day and do the back another day, do it because I'm telling you, it's gonna get a little bit frustrating because you're gonna have to put these fenders on, take them off, fit them, make sure you have the holes right, all of that. So it's gonna take you a while. I would say it took me about three to four hours to get all of this done with the nut cert tool. If I didn't have the nut cert tool, this would have easily taken me half a day, if not a whole day to install. And another thing to consider with these fenders, it's gonna be steel versus aluminum. So Poison Spider offers them in both sets. Um, so it's definitely something you're gonna to have to consider. Um, so the steel is definitely gonna be a stronger option. Um, it's definitely gonna be stronger. <laughs> um, but if you're gonna be in tight spaces, you're gonna be hitting these on a lot of stuff, you're either gonna to need to have touch-up paint ready to go after every trip, or um, you're gonna get a lot of rust um, if they're steel. So that's something to consider there. Aluminum is gonna be a lot lighter. Um, it's still gonna be pretty strong, but not as strong as the steel. Um, so what I did, and this is not conventional, I probably would have done it a different way if I could, um, but I was having trouble finding stock of these fenders. So what I did is on the front, I went ahead and installed the aluminum because I wanted aluminum all the way around but I could only find the fronts in aluminum. They were out of stock everywhere on back order when I tried to order um, the rears and the aluminum. Um, so I had to get the raw aluminum in the front um, and, and they, they're very strong. Let me tell you, I mean, they are extremely strong. Um, I've not hit them on anything yet, but I've sat on them, I've stood on them have not had an issue. So still very strong, not a problem there. Um, now, when it comes to the rear, I had to go with the steel. Um, now, the, what I did with the steel um, in the rear and why I did that is because I was able to get them in the armor coat. Um, so Poison Spider offers what's called their armor coat. It's, it's basically a powder coating process that has like, I think as they said, three layers. So it has about three layers or, or more of paint here. Um, and I've already hit this on a few different things. I, I've actually hit my keys on it a few times. Um, a couple other things as well, but no scratches whatsoever on these. They are a little bit dirty right now. That's, that's what you're seeing, but, um, no scratches at all on these. I, I've really been happy with the armor coat and there's also a warranty on the paint as well. If you order it with the coating. Um, so I wish I could have done that for the front as well, but again, could not find it in the front with the armor coat. Um, so the rear has the steel, whereas the front has the aluminum. Um, again, not a big deal. There's not a ton of a weight difference, but definitely something that, that is going to be a little unconventional. And one thing I will say, no matter, no matter which one you order, steel or aluminum, 
I would definitely recommend you go with the armor coat. And let me show you why. So for the front fenders here, I just rattle can these. I prep them for a long time because I wanted to make sure that they, they really held the paint. Aluminum is harder to paint, harder to get to the paint to stick to. So one thing to consider there, you want to make sure you do your research on painting aluminum before you do it. Um, but I prepped it really, really, really well. I took a long time on the prep. I did about four or five layers uh, of spray paint over a couple days. Uh, just to make sure that really stayed on there. I followed the instructions on the can and, and made sure that I got this as good as I could. And I already have chips. <laughs> so already have chipping in the paint on both sides. Um, like I said, the aluminum just does not hold paint as well as steel does. And that's something I've read across a lot of forums. I'm sure if you take it and get it powder coated, it's different. Um, but I was not gonna pay someone to powder coat these. So to finish it out here, guys, should you buy these fenders? That is a resounding yes. Uh, not only are they gonna add strength to the sides of the Jeep, they're also gonna look really, really, really good. In my opinion, the best looking fender on the market. Um, so they're gonna add strength, they're gonna look good, they're not gonna fade, and they're not gonna sag. Um, so that's, that's a big thing right there for fenders because there's so many options out there on the market. Um, you could go with plastic, you could go with polyurethane, you can go with steel, you can go with aluminum. So many options out there, guys. I would highly recommend the Poison Spider fenders. They are fantastic. Do be sure that if you're going to install these yourself, that you do set aside about half a day, um, if you're gonna be doing it all at once, about half a day, maybe even longer, to get these installed. Um, and make sure that you take your time. It's gonna be worth it in the end to make sure all this is done right um, with the nut certs and all of that. So make sure you take your time. If you're going to pay someone to do this, make sure you have a pretty penny set aside um, because this is going to take at least probably five hours for someone else to do this uh, maybe four hours but if you do four hours times a shop rate of 80 to 100 dollars that's going to be a big part of the cost of these fenders and if you want to see a nice in-depth uh, install of these fenders Go ahead and look at Trail Recon's video. I'll see if I can link it right up here. Trail Recon did a good video on installing these fenders. Uh, it's very detailed, very thorough, so I would definitely check that out if you're gonna be doing these yourself. And again, guys, I'm not bashing the KBD fenders at all. They are a fantastic option at a great price point. I would recommend them to anyone. But again, these Poison Spider fenders are on a whole nother level when it comes to fenders for Jeeps. I think they are far superior in every way. Um, I've loved these fenders, even though the install was kind of a pain in the butt and they are more pricey. I wish I would have done these from the start. And some other great options out there, guys, like I said earlier, you got the Evo fenders that are gonna run you a lot more, uh, but are also a great product. You have the Genrite fenders that are also great. Um, again, multiple brands out there. Those are the, the three that I would recommend would be the Poison Spider, Evo, or the Genrite. Um, I'll throw KBD in there as well, but those are some of the brands that I've seen that I love the look of, and also they are a great product. So um, any of those brands I'd recommend, but Poison Spider is by far my favorite, and that's just personal opinion when it comes to the looks and how they match up to the body lines. All right, guys, and that is going to do it for today. Um, again, did a get a review here of the Poison Spider fenders. If you have any questions on these guys, please drop them down below in the comment section. I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. I've had these on the Jeep now for probably about six to eight months. Um, so I did install these myself. So if you need any help with the install, also feel free to drop a comment below and please like and subscribe for more Jeep and off-road content, guys. Don't forget to go to one of my previous videos. I'll link it right up here um, or over here. Uh, but make sure you go to that video, comment below, and subscribe to get entered into our giveaway at 1K subscribers. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. Have a good one.